Hi everyone, my name is Hussain and in this video we are going to talk about the Keisha side pattern. Keisha side pattern comes under two categories of cloud design patterns, data management and performance efficiency. And the purpose of Keisha side pattern is loading data on demand from the data store into the cache while maintaining the consistency between the data stored in the cache and the data stored in the data store. There are many ways the application can use to load data into the cache. For example, loading static data at the application start is very common in some situations, like loading a list of countries or currencies at the application start is very common in many applications. But in this pattern, we are going to cover caching non-static data and loading it on demand when it's required from the data store and store it in the cache. Now let's go to the scenarios to understand the cache aside pattern better. Let's say that we have built our system based on serverless architecture and our application layer could be anything like Azure App Service, Functions App, or Logic Apps, or even API Management. This is the application layer of our system and the data is stored in SQL database. And of course, there is kind of communication is going to be required between the application layer and the data layer. And this is sample of the data that's stored in the data store. And let's say we want to introduce cache into our system. And somehow we manage it to cache the data for product ID one. And we need to have some kind of communication between the cache instance and the application layer. So when the application layer gets a request to retrieve information about product ID one, for example, the application layer is going to check for the value in the cache first. If it finds the value stored in the cache, it's going to retrieve it straight away. If it didn't find the value stored in the cache, then the application layer is going to get the value from the data store. This is how the caching works. Now let's say that we have updated the product name to XYZ in the data store. And still, we don't have any consistency built between the data in the data store and the data in the cache. So the data in the cache is still be double A for the product name for product ID one, while it's actually now become XYZ in the data store. So when the application layer gets a request to retrieve information about product ID one, the application layer now will go check for the value in the cache and it will find the value for product ID one and it will retrieve the old product name, even though it's been updated to something else. This is one of the challenges that this pattern is trying to solve. How we are going to make sure that there is a consistency between the data in the data store and the data in the cache. And the other challenge is how and when we are going to load the data into the cache. Are we going to load it in the application start or at a certain event? And more importantly, what data to be cached? We want to cache the data that's going to have the most performance impact on our system. And these are the different challenges that the cache aside pattern is trying to solve. But before we get into that, I want to mention that you may already know that the API management comes with its internal caching. And if you are interested to see how it works and the different caching policies you can use for the API management, I'm going to put a link for this video so you can review it. Now let's talk about the different operations supported by different caching systems. We have a read through operation, write through operation, and write behind operation. Let's go through them quickly to know what they are. For the read through operation, the application is going to check the value in the cache. And if the application didn't find the value in the cache, then the application is going to get the value from the data store and then the application is going to store the data in the cache. For the write through operation, the application will update the value in the cache. 
At the same time, the application will update the value in the data store as well. There is additional latency you might expect in here because you are updating data in two places, in the data store and in the cache. For right behind the operation, the application is going to update the data in the cache and asynchronously is going to update the data in the data store using something like message queue. And eventually these values is going to be updated to the data store every minute, hour or day based on your business requirements. Also you can get these values updated to the data store in near real time by having an Azure function that gets triggered with every new message placed in the message queue. By this way, you can have the values updated to the data store in near real time. Also, I want you to be mindful of something using the right behind operation. When the updated value gets stored in the cache and not yet updated in the data store, you want to make sure that you are using a multi-node cache cluster in this situation. Because in an unlikely event, if one of the nodes get damaged and the data get lost, then you are assured that the updated value is stored in other cluster nodes. And what you want to avoid is have a single node cache cluster that might get lost or damaged. In this situation, the updated value is get lost from the cache and hasn't updated yet in the data store and you don't want to be in this situation. These are the different operations supported in the commercial caching systems. Now let's see what we can do if we wanted to implement these mechanisms. Let's say that you want to implement this in your Azure Functions app or Azure App Service, and you can implement this by doing three simple steps. First step, you are going to check and see if the value is stored in the cache. If you didn't find the value stored in the cache, then you are going to grab it from the data store. And then finally, you are going to store this value in the cache for future use. Now let's see how the code looks like. And I got this template from Azure Online Documentation. And I'm going to put a link for this page in the resources of this video. So this is the read function. And the first thing that you want to do is to check the cache or reading the value from the cache. And then if you get a cache miss in this situation, like you didn't find the value in the cache, then you are going to grab it from the data store. And then finally, you are going to store the value in the cache for future use. And what's going to happen in the update operation is really simple and straightforward as well. What you want to do is to go ahead and update the value in the data store and then go ahead and delete the key from the cache or delete the value from the cache. This is to avoid your functions app from reading the old value that's stored in the cache. Now you might be asking, how are we supposed to get the value again in the cache? And the answer is going to be in the next read operation. When we get a cache miss, because we have already deleted the value from the cache, then the application is going to grab the value from the data store and place it again in the cache. This is to make sure that the data stored in the cache is up to date and is consistent with the data stored in the data store. This is how you can use different caching operations in your application code. Now let's talk about some considerations you need to keep in mind while using the cache aside pattern. Time to live. All caching systems have this expiration policy that's going to invalidate the data and remove it from the cache if it hasn't been accessed for a certain amount of time. And you need to specify TTL value very carefully. Having TTL value too long, then there is a bigger chance that the value stored in the cache is going to be stale. And having TTL value too short, then your application might not have any chance to get the value from the cache and then the cache will be useless in this situation. So you need to specify TTL value very carefully based on your situation. Evicting data. As you may already know, cache has a limited capacity compared to the data store. 
and you might run into a situation where your cache instance run out of space and you need to delete some data from the cache to free up some space for more important data to be cached. And there are a lot of evicting strategies you can apply, like first in first out, last in last out, removing data randomly from the cache or least accessible data, you need to determine what's your evicting strategy you are gonna be for your application. Priming the cache. Remember when we said that the static data usually gets loaded into the cache at the application start? Now consider a situation when this static data gets deleted at the evicting data strategy you have specified for your application. And you don't want to restart your application in order to reload this static data into the cache again. What you can do instead is to implement the caching mechanism in the different read and write operation as we've already seen. This will give you a chance to reload the data, the static data into the cache if it got deleted in any evicting event or any memory dump event that might happen. Consistency. You might feel that by implementing cache aside pattern that you have achieved 100% consistency between the data stored in the data store and the data stored in the cache. But unfortunately, this is not the case. You might have an external process that updates the data in the data store, leaving the old data in the cache as it is. And to overcome this challenge, you need to consider implementing domain-driven design, or DDD, where you are going to have a certain service that's responsible to make updates to certain tables in the data store. And this service is going to be responsible for updating the cache as well and making sure that the cache is up to date as the data store. Having DDD implementation will assure you 100% consistency between the data in the data store and the data in the cache. Then finally, you need to consider the deployment style for your cache, whether you are going to have a local cache or a single node cache instance or multi-node cache cluster. Now let's see when you should use this pattern. If you don't have a native read-through or write-through operations implemented already, you need to consider implement cache aside pattern yourself. Also, when the resource demand is unpredictable, you are not sure what data or which data is gonna be required next, and you cannot load everything into the cache, then you need to implement cache aside pattern. And when you shouldn't use this pattern, when the data set or cached data set is static, as we said before, static data usually gets loaded into the cache at the application start. Also, you don't want to cache session state information in a web application hosted in a web form. It's better to use a sticky session option in the elastic load balancer or in your load balancer to achieve this. Now we are coming to the end of this video. I hope now it's clear for you what cache aside pattern is about, what are the different caching operations you can use, and how you can implement it yourself, what are the different considerations to keep in mind when using this pattern, and when you should use it, when you shouldn't. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to put it in the comments below. And thanks for watching.